Hey guys, so when I was first starting this channel, one of the most common questions that I get asked by my friends and coworkers is how to improve your coffee at home. So in this episode, I thought I would give you guys a quick breakdown of the selection and the budgets that might be involved. One of the most accessible ways to start this hobby is by getting a French press. I'm sure you guys have seen it out there. It's this carafe with a little plunger on top. So you let the coffee steep and then simply filter out the coffee grinds and you can enjoy your coffee from there. Now, this is a great way to start learning how to control your grind size as well as brew time. This is especially good for someone who enjoys a stronger and bolder cup of coffee as more oil is extracted from the ground. However, this method also doesn't fully filter out all of the grits that's in the coffee ground. So if you prefer for a smoother tasting cup of coffee, you probably want to go with my next method. So in my opinion, if you want to start appreciating coffee on a different level, a pour over is really the ideal place to start because the pour over will get you a smooth cup of coffee just as you would with a typical drip coffee machine. However, it will still allow you to have control over the grind size as well as your pour speed. This will result in a smoother and lighter cup of coffee that will highlight the characters of the coffee that you pay for. So aside from just a pour over coffee, my drink of choice when I just want to unwind and relax at home is going with a nice espresso milk beverage. A good home espresso machine will be relatively more pricier. However, I have gotten so many delicious cup of drinks from my machine that I'll make the purchase again on a heartbeat. Now before we get into all the tools that we have here today, let's first talk about the coffee. I've been making coffee at home for three years. Although that in no way makes me an expert on coffee beans, I did notice a significant difference between a properly done light roast coffee and your more common medium, medium dark roast coffee. If you are not making coffee at home, chances are you're already accustomed to the darker roast coffee taste. A lot of the coffee that you find on common store shelves list coffee as light roast, however they might still be medium to medium dark. So here, let me show you the difference. First of all, darker roast coffee will be quite a bit more earlier, which will end up leaving more residue on your grinder or in your machine. Secondly, because the dark roast coffee has been roasted for much longer, it hollows out the coffee. If you held the coffee and compare it to a properly done light roast coffee, the light roast coffee will be a lot heavier. Actually, it feels a bit more denser while being the same size. Now, I don't like to get into too much numbers on my channel here, but the best way to demonstrate this is by weighing the coffee out for you guys. So as you can see, we have a similarly sized light roast coffee on the left hand side and a dark roast coffee on the right hand side. If we put them on the scale, you will notice that there's actually a two to three gram difference between the two beans. So you might think, so what if the coffee is a little bit lighter? Well, one of the most important things to improve your coffee at home is by having weight consistency. For a common darker roast coffee, you will need more coffee to achieve the same weight. Maybe for a pour over, it's less of an issue. However, when it comes to an press or like an espresso machine, the porter filter is only a specific size. By adding more coffee in there, you will actually end up not fitting all of the coffee grounds into the porter filter, or you will mess up the entire water and coffee ground ratio. So to fix this, you might end up cutting back on the coffee that goes into your beverage and that will result in a less than ideal cup of beverage. So with that said, I want to emphasize on starting with good coffee beans. And no, I do not mean going from Starbucks to Starbucks Reserve. I have made that mistake before, trust me. I personally always recommend my friends to try out Kanto Culture Coffee as they have always produced great beans throughout the year and they always have a good selection. I have also tried B&W or Onyx Coffee Roaster. Those are also good choices you guys can check out. If a simple cup of pour over is your game, you'll need the following items. As with everything that I'm gonna go over, you always start off with a scale. You don't have to go for anything fancy. If you can find something with a timer built in, that will come in handy. I just have this one that I got from Amazon. This is gonna be around $12, and I use my phone as a timer. Secondly, of course, you need a coffee grinder because it's always good to start with freshly ground beans. If you have the space and the budget for an electric grinder, go ahead. I, myself, go with a manual grinder because I do plan on getting a uh, electric grinder in the future and this manual grinder will allow me to grind coffee at home as well as when I'm traveling. This grinder is the Hario ceramic hand grinder and it runs about $35. Next is a pour over craft. You can use anything like a V60 or a Chemex. I personally use a Kalita Wave. This is about $60. Next we have a nice kettle for a pour over. What you're looking for is ideally a gooseneck kettle. This will really control the water flow that 
that's coming out of the pot will allow you to have that nice controlled motion. This particular kettle, I believe, was around $50. Uh, there are other options on Amazon which might be a little bit cheaper for around $20 to $30. Some of them even comes with a electrical heating element. Alternatively, the AeroPress has gained a lot of popularity in the recent years. I personally feel that the AeroPress brings out more body and sweetness from the coffee. So for someone coming from a French press, you might actually appreciate the boldness that a AeroPress brings. It also packs much easier and cleans up much quicker than the Pro Over. For the AeroPress, you obviously still need to have a scale, a grinder of your choice, and either the normal AeroPress or the AeroPress Go that I have, both of which is going to be around $30. Finally, if you're like me and enjoy a nice espresso beverage, you will obviously go with an espresso machine. Now, this will require a slightly higher budget, but I do recommend that you start off with a good machine. I personally go with the Bravo Barista Express because it have a built-in PID system. Now that is important because the PID system help manage the temperature within the machine. You will also want to pay special attention when you pick a scale. The scale should be something small and you can find it under something like a jewelry scale which goes up to a two decimal point. Now you want it to be small because you want it to fit nicely underneath the group head. Lastly, you just need a nice five to six ounce cup and a rag to clean up the machine afterwards. I got this cup from Ikea for about $2.99 and a rag I guess you can find around the house for practically free. So I hope this episode helped you get a better idea on how to improve coffee at home and a reference on the tools that you might want or need. Just to clarify, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. These are things that I pulled from my own drawer or counter. Anyways, if you like the content, please subscribe to my channel, dropping a like on the video, and enable the bell icon to be notified of future episodes. As always, leave your comments and questions down below, and I'll see you next time.